four people trying to save a nickel on tuna. Roseanne star Lori Metcalf on how the mega hit sitcom is on the pulse of America right now. And one woman's emotional Mother's Day tribute to how her daughter with Down syndrome taught her the power of love. I was given this daughter to change my heart and to show me a different kind of perfect. The hottest topics are on the table with Whoopi, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, Sonny Hostin, and Megan McCain. Now, let's get things started. have to say. Are those the red hat ladies? No, these no, ladies are in red. Ladies. These are, y'all are looking fly over yeah. here. I just want to, I mean, just beautiful, beautiful. Are, these, are they the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, or? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> well, all red, I'm, I'm, yeah. it's a black sorority. sorority. Yeah. I'm an AKA, pink and green, but I still love my Delta Sigma. I'm a TSOP. <laughs> Listen, I got to tell you guys, yesterday I went to see SpongeBob the Musical. You have got to take every child you know, every kid. This is one of the funnest experiences I've oh, ever, wow. ever, ever had in a theater. Wow. If you want to see something fun that you could take the whole family, four-year-olds you can take to this. Wow. If, I mean, I just, I spent the whole time like this. <laughs> Because it was just fun, and the kids were having, the, 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 I call them the kids, but they were all having a great time, and, and, and it's affordable. So uh -huh. there's a lot of stuff out there that we tell you, you should see this. Yeah. But this you can go and see, and it's affordable, and I'm telling you, you will not, you will not be mad at me. You will not be mad at me. Take every kid you got. You emailed right after. I like, did. Yeah, you got to go like, there. I, I mean, I, I, you know, because there's not a lot of stuff that you see that you could take the little ones yeah. to. Yeah. And it's and bright it's and it's also. great for adults. It's really? funny as hell. Yeah, it's very funny. Anyway, yeah. enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the White House, congratulations, by the way. White House. Uh, you were up early to greet the freed American prisoners who got off a plane from North Korea at 3 a.m. this morning. Glad to have them home. And some people are saying that this is a sign that you know whose tactics with Kim Jong-un are working. And he just tweeted their uh, meeting in Singapore on June 12th and will both try to make a very special moment for world peace. Well, you know, good for him. If, yeah. if, it, if it works, we're happy for him. Yeah. I wish he would. Us. I wish that he would like do what he has to do with the world. If, if he's on the right track, I give him credit for that. Mm -hmm. I just wish that he would stop attacking the press and our American institutions because it's it's eroding the democracy underneath our feet. Mm -hmm. People do not believe what they're reading anymore, and there are legitimate sources to read, and he's making it impossible to believe anything. Yeah. And I think that that is a very dangerous thing to do. Just stop doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you Keep know, saving the I, world. I hope yeah. it was his big talk, mainly because regardless, he thinks it was. And if he thinks <laughs> it is, it has emboldened him uh -huh. going forward in other meetings. Mm -hmm. And so I just wouldn't want that to be false confidence. So I hope that it was the big talk that paid off for him. But we don't know what's going to happen with Iran. That's, that's a, up in the that's air That's what now. I mean. There's a lot of because things he, going he forward. He might have made a huge mistake, could be very disastrous what he did. So we yeah. don't know yet. The jury is out on him. But it's still historically unprecedented for him to be, as you said just a moment ago, for him to be even having a meeting with Kim Jong-un. This morning when I woke up and I saw the footage of this, I mean, I know it's going to sound a little cheesy and saccharine, but it made me feel really proud to be an American. Anytime Americans who have been held hostage in another country are freed to come home, very obviously, nice. I know what that's like in my family, and it just mm -hmm. makes you feel very patriotic, it made me feel very hopeful this morning. You're right, though. I mean, I do think there's a question of what happens next and what involvement China will have with President Xi, especially in shutting down the economy of North Korea, if that ultimately is 
the, the way that we end up doing this, but there's huge human rights violations still going on in North Korea, and yes. I want to know what's going to happen with America's stance. As I said yesterday, I don't think we should be negotiating with countries like this, so are they going to come to the table and make, make any movements make as well? Make real concessions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm all for diplomacy. I think it's extremely important. You know, instead of showing might through strength all the time and military strength, <laughs> use diplomacy, and, and I think that's a wonderful thing. But I, I, I do wonder what comes next, because yeah. you're talking about a leader, Kim Jong-un, who ordered the execution, allegedly, of his own uncle. And so but, when uh, you're... By wild the, dogs. By wild dogs. And, and, and so, oh you know, it's, it's, I think it's wonderful that we have um, hostages that were released. It's not unprecedented. In 2014, no, but, they were released under Obama. In 2009, they were released yeah. so far, with Bill Clinton. Yeah. So far, but it's on the right this path. This is one of the things yeah. that we can say, okay, <coughs> well done. Yeah. And by the way, that's you're why right path. this show, we're not... We're not hypocrites. No. You know? Everybody, including Joy, is giving this to him, and I think it's a good day. Yeah. Let's well, go. yeah, we get, you know, we, we, cautiously. Yes. Cautiously, cautiously optimistic. optimistic. Yeah. optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was tough talk during the CIA director nominee Gina Haspel Senate confirmation hearing where she was grilled about overseeing a CIA torture program in 20, 2002. My bad. Camilla Harris, senator, tried to find out if her views have changed. Take a look. Do you believe the previous interrogation techniques were immoral? Senator, I believe that CIA it's did extraordinary yes no, work to prevent another attack on this country given the legal tools that we were authorized Please to Please answer use. yes or no. Senator, what I believe sitting here today is that I support the higher moral standard we have decided to hold ourselves to. Can you please to. answer the question? Senator, I, I think I've answered the question. No, you've not. <laughs> Remember how the gentleman in the White House talked about torture on the campaign trail? No? We got a clip. <laughs> Don't tell me it doesn't work. Torture works, okay, folks? Torture, you know, I have these guys. Torture doesn't work. Believe me, it works, okay? And waterboarding is your minor form. Some people say it's not actually torture. Let's assume it is. But they asked me the question, what do you think of waterboarding? Absolutely fine. But we should go much stronger than waterboarding. That's the way I feel. Well, what I'd like to say is I would like you to try it oh. and see how that, because I don't think anybody, I mean, you know, see, I think people who have actually been tortured, who are saying this is not a good thing, you should listen to them because you have never been tortured mm -hmm. and neither has Dick Cheney. Actually, Dick Cheney had five deferments from the military, so he, he oh, didn't, he's never served like either. President uh -huh. Trump. No, but I, this I, is why I can't stand Trump. See, now we're turning it around <laughs> again. <Yeah. laughs> because she's back! <laughs> She give it with this hand, she take it with that. I mean, because he says it, oh, there's no, it doesn't work. Because yeah. there's no collusion, there's no climate change, because he says it, that so, makes it true? No, it's so not true. I have a lot to say about this, and we're yeah. running short on the clock. So do you, I don't, am I, do you want to, okay. It. This is what I will say. Obviously, if you know nothing about my father, you probably know, know that he was tortured in prison for five yes, and a half no. years. He couldn't lift me up over his head as a baby. He can't ride a bike. He has war injuries that have lasted his entire life since. Mm -hmm. It does not work. Life isn't like the show 24 where you just take a gun and you're going to blow someone's kneecap off and then you get all the information <laughs> yeah. you want. Right. The point is the people break yes. at a certain point and they give false information, right. which is why we have to rely on all our ops uh, forces, mm -hmm. special forces around the country, which, by the way, is how we ended up catching Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. The final thing I would like to say is when you're talking about waterboarding, mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people understand what waterboarding is. Yeah. And it's when someone is strapped on to a plank of some kind, normally at a 10, 20 degree horizontal uh, way, mm -hmm. they have a piece of cloth over their face and then people pour water down them and it uh, gives the simulation of drowning. Right. Yeah. It is torture by, by anybody's Clearly. standard. Yeah. We have to be better. As I said yesterday, we have to be better than the terror. So we have to be better than that. Does it make her is she now unqualified I cannot, to leave? I, if you are okay well, with torture, if you're okay with waterboarding, which I consider, and I think from the pause, probably most he Americans He says go do further well. than waterboarding. Maybe he means drowning. What I is think he talking I about? I think that is psychotic. And that makes I think it's psychotic. Un just... But this moral relativism of where we would go down. We as Americans are, what's next? Are we going to be like ISIS and chop people's heads yeah. off? We are better she than them. That is why American exceptionalism. She said she, she, says she, she won't do it, but you know, everybody says they won't until yeah. they do. And then yeah. Abu Ghraib happens. And she also destroyed yes. 92 we videotapes We will of be right back Sorry. with more Hot Topics. Later, inviting controversy. Monica Lewinsky was pulled from the guest list of an event because Bill Clinton wanted to attend. Is she still being punished? 
Yeah, these women like to mix things up. Hey, Ma! And when it comes to their pets, all bets are off. Austin tends. Wait, Sunny has pet chickens? We're busting out of the coop. Behar's Bernie. Come here, Bernie. Show them how brilliant you are. See how he walks, how beautifully he does that? Which co-host pet is gonna be the best pet on the net? These chickens are gonna feel the burn. It's the face-off we've all been waiting for. Hey, Bernie, you up for some chicken tonight? I know. And the one and only Martha Stewart judges. Tuesday, feathers will be ruffled. <laughs> you ready, Joy? Hey, Bernie, you feel so... Oh, so you got that. The View. Don't miss it. Still ahead, Roseanne star Lori Metcalf hits the table. Police! And how a girl with Down syndrome showed her mom that love has no limits. So welcome back. Town and Country Magazine has apologized to Monica Lewinsky for uninviting her to a social event on social change once Bill Clinton confirmed he was attending. I mean, who planned this party? Yeah. Yeah. I Town mean, and country, apparently. <laughs> no, no, that part we get. But someone was a, funny. really... Was a mix-up, no? I, I don't know, oh. but it just feels very sort of... Uh... It was like a wedding list where you bank on Aunt Betty not being able to make it because yeah. you're inviting her there sister, and then it blew up. Yeah, in their and then Aunt Betty can make and it. Aunt and Betty is around, and she's coming. But then why not allow Monica to do the yeah. opening remarks? Because he's yeah. the, the president. It's the way things work. You know, he's in a powerful position, so he gets the real invitation. Well, know, they both they... got real invitations, yeah. well, but, he I, gets but this is about well, change. Well, hers was refundable, right? clearly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's too, it, it's too bad in the, in the time of Me Too. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's too bad in the time of Me Too where we're in a real watershed moment, I think, in terms of empowerment of women. And she was sort of ground zero for a lot of this, you know, bullying and ostracizing. Why couldn't they both... Attend. I think the press coverage kidding? of that would I become know, the whole Joy thing. On this. Why not? On. Why not? Why really? can't they usher one in and usher one out? I'm with Joy on they this. They do that all the time. No, no this, not sitcom? like this. <laughs> I, <laughs> like really? This. Yeah. Well, I think no, it would draw the attention so away would, from it would, the philanthropic. It would kill what you know, they were doing. They could, so they can never be at the same place at the same uh, time? They probably could, but not for this. For because then this, this event becomes about, oh my God, did you see? You don't want to do that. That's This is a different Event. You know, but my question is, yeah. why not allow her to do the opening? Well, you know, yeah. all the women in his life, and I, and I was a fan, obviously, of mm -hmm. his, all the women in his life suffer. His wife, mm -hmm. basically, a lot of why she lost has to do with him mm -hmm. because of the scandal that he was involved in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now, Monica, you know, she was consensual at the time, mm -hmm. even though it was, she was a kid, and mm -hmm. that was what was wrong about it. By her. a kid, you mean like 21? Well, just he, to was, clarify. he was a president. It was in his No, office. it was. It was. I just didn't want it yeah. to sound a, like and, there and was so a backstory. And so Hillary story. suffers, and then Monica has to be bullied for 20 years or whatever it is and then uh, probably Chelsea has to suffer for it and wherever she goes she has to have that stain on her so this is what what he did so he, this is what he, he be did disinvited? Not disagree but I, I reiterate in this country, power supersedes no power. And that's why they Well, and this was a fundraiser him. where they're trying to get money. So a, a, a president of the United States, former. a former, well, yeah, I think they're always called presidents, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, Whatever. Yeah. Bill Clinton is, yeah. is offered to come. I think they're looking at how much can we bring in, how much mm -hmm. of a RSVP list. It, it doesn't make it he's right. I wouldn't draw. do it. Yeah, he's, he's a, a big draw. guy. We've had this conversation. Yeah. I know. Right. It's a tough He's thing. the top dog. And yeah. we will be right back. Dog. So Google just unveiled a new AI technology that passes for a human so well it can make your appointments for you mm. and demonstrated it in action. Take a look. Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. 
I hate when they say perfect. Mm. That you makes know? me crazy. Why? Mm. I she just made an appointment yeah. better than I make appointments. Mm. I, I think it's great. The mm-hmm sold it for me. <laughs> I, right? I mean, I, I think it's use creepy. It. Really? Yeah. It scared me a little bit. I don't bit. want it. You know, oh, when the research it. says that they think they always have women's voices on GPS, mm -hmm. Waze, um, the Alexa, I want Morgan Siri, on because everything. they say that a woman's <laughs> voice is more soothing but sounds less intelligent. So it's like, really? that's the research. So that's like you have, this is CNN, a big man, and then you have, turn left at the Shell station. <laughs> So I, I think there's sexism involved here yeah. in the voices. Well, I well, like to put over that out there. Over 85% of this programming is done by men. Yes, and, I think and that's, they program it also. And they program it, but they also them? give you, they also, in, you have choice. They also give you a choice. I have a hot Brit leading me around. <laughs> I am a New Zealand guy, but I can't understand him. Oh, you him. have a man? Yeah. In GPS. Yeah. Yeah. You can change it. You can change it. It's so hot. Morgan well, Freeman. It's the, the best one. Yeah. Trust me. It's you can get Morgan Freeman in yours? You can get Morgan Freeman at his voice anywhere you want, and yeah. it's the best one. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally <laughs> trashing my guy. Elba is also a very good choice. But those you have to choose. The ones that are automatic are all female. Her voice is a woman. She has a nickname. You, yeah. I can't say that. Who, but it's, Siri? No, it, the GPS woman is called a bee in a box. Bitch really? in a box? Really? Bitch in a box. I just did. Who <laughs> <laughs> can say it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what they call her. Like, because she Who tells someone. That? Well, nobody's patient with someone that gets you lost. Like, tell someone oh. that's lost that that woman is soothing. Wait, wait. I thought that the, that's I, wait, not I thought she's lost. not supposed to get you. She See, gets this, you lost this if you is listen the, to her. This is the problem. Well, what? this is the problem. Why do you have her if you're not going to listen to her? I listen to her. She'll have you drive off a cliff sometimes. Like, no. that's true. It's true. That's true. That's a true story. That's a That was true. So, think ways works. They did not look. That AI did not like that person. What? Because that's what they do. They get to know like you, they get, <laughs> and they hear everything, and they say, "You know what? Take Turn a left." Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you going in the right direction. Bye, okay. girl. Well, oh, oh, are we lost? <laughs> oh, I'm so Trust sorry, me. bitch. <laughs> we'll be right back. So funny. She's the star of the two highest rated sitcoms on TV, Roseanne. I think we know who's a liar and who's on fire, Roseanne. And Mother. Big Bang Theory. Shelly, I'm so glad you're here. Lori Metcalf is live on The View next. Scored an acting trifecta this year. Scored an Oscar nod for Lady Bird. She's on the most talked about sitcom on TV right now, Roseanne, and snagged a Tony nomination for the Broadway revival of Three Tall Women. Please welcome the fabulous Lori Metcalf. So I know. I I'm saw you after that course. one. So, Dal, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> you I, I know you invited me back, and, and I came. Yes, <laughs> with great news. I mean, you got the nomination. This is coming after your last win for Doll's House Part 2. Uh, someone said that you keep <laughs> Tony uh, at home, but I hear there's uh, three Emmys for for Roseanne that are not quite at home. No, I, I moved um, uh, years and years ago, and I, I did have three Emmys from the Roseanne the, back in the day. And I didn't know, I was really, really downsizing, and I didn't know what to do with them. And so they ended up going over to my ex's wife's, who is huh. the casting director, Linda Lowy, who is oh. fantastic, does all of Shonda Rhimes' yes. things. Yeah. And so she had three herself from casting. So now they're clumped together, and it's very impressive yes. <laughs> because there's six of them lined up like that on, on, on Human in, yes. could, in her living room. Does she take credit for all of them? No, no. She, we, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it just looks really good. Yeah. Well, Lori, a record 18 million people oh. watched the debut of Roseanne. Mm -hmm. The president... Paul Roseanne to congratulate her on the show's numbers. A lot of people call it a pro-Trump show, but we want to show you a clip because it maybe bucks the narrative on this. 
Anytime something bad happens, it's always somebody who lives next door to somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. You figured it out. Terrorists are always neighbors. So, all we have to do is arrest everybody. I'm telling you, this is what people from Iraq and Talibanistan do. They hide out in neighborhoods like Lanford. Don't you watch the news? You don't mean the news, you mean Fox News. And... There is no Taliban is... Oh, forget it. <laughs> there is no Talibanistan. <laughs> what are your thoughts, though? And I, I laughed so hard when I saw that your character voted for Jill Stein and regretted it it's on the regretted premiere it. episode. I know, I know. Well, I think the writers are really clever in the sense that they... You, you, you know, we've taken this family, um, uh, plucked them out and mm -hmm. dropped them in 2018, and so we have to address the current issues. But they always take, um, they always boil it back down to the family. Mm -hmm. So in the premiere, which was how we voted and there mm -hmm. became a rift between the sisters, mm -hmm. it boiled down to what was really um, deep down between the sisters that caused that rift, not yeah. necessarily the election. And so I, I think it, it, I think you watch show and the writing of this show through your own lens mm -hmm. and and um, I, I, and I and I, it's not written obviously tilted in any direction but yeah. I think people take away what they want to mm -hmm. take away right right, right. right. the writers have done a, a very like great, all of the family topic. did years and years exactly. ago yeah. same idea right. so um, your ex your co-star ex co-star Tom Arnold mm -hmm. remember him mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> he said that you and he had a little bit of a thing. This is before Roseanne was married to him. In the beginning of the show, when you first went on the air, true or false, number one. Who cares? We care. Well, I don't. well, I, know I you have don't. to say, America we're going. We okay. Here, let me put it this way. Okay. I have a really bad memory, and we are going back uh, 25, 30 years. Oh. If I had to, tr um, if I had to put my cards on my memory versus Tom's, I'm going to go with Tom. Okay. okay. I'm going to say that yes. So he was that memorable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. So now my second part of this question is, why, why, can't win? You know, why did Roseanne say don't go there if it was true? Well, I heard that, I, I'm sure that that part is true. And I heard that what she said was you can't, uh, writers, he was writing on the show, can't be dating actors. She but just had she, set that as a precedent. Him. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know. well she's like other people. Um, okay. You also play Sheldon's mom on TV's other highest rated sitcom, The Big Bang Theory. And in, he's getting married in tonight's season finale. Right. Um, but you had humble beginnings at the in Chicago at the Steppenwolf Theater mm -hmm. with some amazing people as well in the 19th 70s, Gary Sinise, John Malkovich. Wow. Now, I heard you guys used to draw straws at some point. Well, we started out in a church basement, sat 88 people. <laughs> and so all we wanted to do was act. And, uh, but we had to um, figure out who was going to direct that particular show. <laughs> Nobody wanted to. They wanted to be on the stage. So uh -huh. the shortest straw had to be the director. And, and the director also had to, you know, clean the bathroom and rip the tickets. Oh my God. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> the director tough. sounds fun. The rest was buried in yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. toilets with that. I want to oh ask you about your current play, Three Tall Women, which I saw last night. And <gasps> you were there last night. Uh, well, uh, on the matinee at 2 yes, o'clock. Yeah. It was one of the best plays I've ever seen. I it had never fantastic. read it. I had never seen it. And on the page, it was really elusive. I didn't know what we had. Yeah. But I really love the production that Joe Mantello, um, Mantello. Let, led us yes. through. The, yeah. Yeah. the direction, Mantello. just the, 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 the set, set design, is beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, it's been nominated for a Tony for Best Revival. Mm -hmm. It's been getting incredible reviews. Um, and it's just... You, the legendary Glenda Jackson, who's fantastic, Allison Pill, I loved it again. Tell us about it. Um, I can, t uh, there are spoilers in it, so which I don't right. really don't, don't want to spoil. Don't, don't, spoil. Don't, don't tell them that. No, one. but um, I'll tell you that uh, the first part of it takes place in a very beautiful, wealthy, um, older woman's bedroom. And I'm her caretaker, and Allison mm -hmm. Pill is um, there representing her lawyer to discuss financial. And then, and then all of our relationships shift as yes. the stage does, and we become different people. Oh. And, and um, it's very nonlinear. 
uh, it has a lot of humor in it, which yes, you wouldn't expect. Right. Well, he uh, wrote Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, dark. Yeah, dark. Well, it's funny. also about the evolution of a woman. I was sitting with yes. strangers. I went by myself. I was sitting with this woman, Heidi. We got into a 30-minute conversation after the play, and she told me at the end of it, when you turn 50, you do get a 360-degree view of your life. Mm -hmm. And she said, but always remember that the hand that you hold the longest is your own. Mm, that's beautiful. Oh. Heidi. I don't know her last name. Oh, that's nice. And it was the play that started I that. I know, the play prompted, prompts um, Prompt discussions like that. Incredible discussions yes. about women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> His plays are, are very good for women. This is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and are there three tall women in this? There are three women. <laughs> I'm 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> so, we, the, it's, it, it, yes, it's a, sort of a mirage. We, we do look a little bit. You look tall. We, we Love look it. Tall. I've never seen anybody Glenda so Jackson. busy. I mean, yeah. God, you're and so Lady busy. And Ladybird. Yeah. Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Again, anytime. This is your this is your spot. Come Thank you. anytime. Yeah. Thank you. We want to say our thanks to Lord Metcalf. Three tall women is playing now at the Golden Theater in New York City. Roseanne airs Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on ABC. We'll be right back. Yo! <laughs> Next, celebrate Mother's Day early when one mom shares why her daughter with Down syndrome is nothing short of a miracle. She is the glue that holds our family together. She is the, the light of our lives. Oh yeah, this table has heard it all. Because this is the place where people come to voice their view. That's what the view does. But this May, even we can't believe who's about to hit this table. Annette Benning, Terrence Howard, Martha Stewart, Michelle Wolf, and watch what happens with Andy Cohen. You're welcome for that. Plus, if you're looking for the hottest political exclusives, look no further than The View. That's unbelievable. Serving a few strong all May long. Take a little time to enjoy The View. Mother's Day, The View and our sponsor, Teleflora, are partnering to Love Out Loud. Teleflora's new Love Makes a Mom campaign honors fearless moms with three short videos that prove motherhood takes a different path for each woman. But their journeys are always guided by love. Like ER nurse Kara Armstrong, who found out early in her pregnancy that the girl she wanted so badly could have Down syndrome. I don't know what perfect looks like, but... Um... It, it was something that I was striving for, to have the perfect family. When Mia was born, um, a doctor came in and said, I'm so sorry. I didn't doubt that I would love my baby, but I doubted that I was the right woman for the job. But she is the glue that holds our family together. She is the the light of our lives. Tell them about me, the sassiness. I think motherhood is about embracing who they were created to be. She's all fixed up. I was given this daughter to change my heart and to show me a different kind of perfect. Please welcome Kara, Jack, and Mia. I got greeted by Mia with a full-blown hug and then an order to Jack to hug me too. So she's my kind of people. But yeah, I think so many of us. Oh, she's a. You, oh, she oh. loves her big brother. Mm -hmm. um, your story really struck a chord with so many of us because I think everyone has an idea of what a perfect family will look like. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, just, you know, the, from the moment you find out that you're pregnant, you have dreams for your baby mm -hmm. and visions of what life is going to look like nine months later when they place that beautiful baby in your arms. So the news that Maya, yeah. Mia might have had Down syndrome um, just changed my dreams and visions a little bit. It, it made me adjust to a different path, and it took me on a different journey. And I think that's what's so powerful about this campaign, Love Out Loud, is that it celebrates that as moms we have different journeys, but the one thing that we share in common is the unconditional love that we have have for our children. That's right. That yeah. doesn't change. That doesn't change. Now, you, um, I heard that when you found out um, 
uh, about Mia possibly having Down syndrome, you kept hearing the same three words over and over and over again. That's right. Um, at my 11-week ultrasound, which is another exciting moment, yeah. a doctor just burst through the door of the treatment room and said the three words that we hear over and over again over the last seven years, and those three words were, I'm so sorry. Huh. And I think what I want the world to know is that we're not sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> weren't even sure of whether she mm -hmm. would have that. So yeah. what was the rest of the, the pregnancy like and how did you get through that? That weight must have felt really long. Yes, it, it, was a, it was a time of trepidation, fear, and anxiety. I think I got through because I had one foot in the, t I might have a typical baby world, and another foot in the, I might be facing a Down syndrome diagnosis. So I was sort of straddling two wor worlds, but it was definitely a time of fear. And um, yeah. Down syndrome is not something to, to fear. As a matter of fact, in our family, it's something we're very proud of, and it's something that we celebrate, because yeah. we realize that <laughs> Talk to <the> <laughs> Mia, <laughs> Mia, Mia has changed our lives, our hearts, and really our minds about um, talk what, to the what people <laughs> she just she said talk to the hands. <laughs> <laughs> what That's people, like David. <laughs> right, Jacko? Well, she's obviously spectacular. And, and you said I that she is. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, you said that you knew she was special from the very beginning. I did. Um, she just I, has this emotional intelligence. She's really smart. She has regular yeah. intelligence, too. Yeah. But she has an emotional intelligence that I have just never encountered before. She, um, <laughs> she knows what we need when we need it. She loves us the way that we need to be loved and she's literally the glue that just binds our family together. Oh. Well, and you are... <laughs> You're an ER nurse, so you know empathy is vital. You hold the hands of people who are dealing with big news or bad news. Right. Uh, how did that empathy translate to your parenting with not only Mia and Jack, but you also have another daughter, Amber? Right, yeah. Um, I, you know... Empathy was the reason that I became a nurse. I'm a naturally empathetic person, but boy, did my practice as a nurse change once I received a life-altering diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, it's allowed me to hold the hand of my patient that's getting that kind of news differently. And I think any ER nurse will tell you that when we come home at night, we hug our children tighter than most moms yeah. do because we know that life can change on a dime yeah. and we're not promised tomorrow. So it's helped me love like it's been a full circle. My nursing has helped me love my kids better mm -hmm. and my kids have le helped me love my patients better. That's amazing. <laughs> well, Jack, we can see how much Mia loves her big brother and it's <laughs> obvious that you love her as well. What makes her so special? What makes being her big brother so terrific? Well, there isn't really one thing. It's everything that she does. It's, I love her for everything, not just one thing. It's not that she, every time I walk down the hall and she's there, that she gives me a hug. It's not that she nonstop kisses me. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> it's everything. Wow. And wow. God put <laughs> so, Mia. Mother's Day is coming up. How much do you love your mom? Oh. That much. <laughs> I love that, Mia. And, and Kara, we heard you and your family are going on a trip to the island of Oahu in Hawaii oh. this summer for the first time. Yeah. Are you going there, Mia? Yeah. I, I hope so, Jack. Hawaii. <laughs> but we have an early Mother's Day surprise gift for you. Teleflora would like to pay for the airfare for your family's upcoming Aww. trip to Hawaii. Thank you for being a fearless mom and sharing your story here today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor. Thank and you. thank you guys. Because, Mia, you. you have been full-blown entertainment. Can I get another hug? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, and Sarah's oh. such a hugger. Yes. Yeah, so you helped yeah. me read that. So you look right up there. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Flora wants members of our audience to love out loud this Mother's Day by sending a beautiful bouquet just like the ones on our set, all made by hand and delivered by hand by your local florist. Do your hand like this, do Vanna White. And guess what? <laughs> Everyone in our studio audience can surprise prize mom because they're going home with a $100 Teleflora yeah. gift card. Yes. Can you tell
Annette Benning is flashing back Friday. Oh, yeah, that'll be the day. For the 30th anniversary of her very first movie role. Welcome back. So looking at you guys watching, it was quite wonderful to see you all sitting Aww. with this little girl. She's kind She's of fabulous. Spectacular. But from the point you say hi, she jumps into your arms. And I always say if I yeah. raise kind children, I'll feel successful. Yes. So Jack walks up with a hand. Yeah. She hugs me. And then she goes, Jack, hug her. <laughs> and I just laugh because the, you hope that's how your kids turn out. And he like was the were... most polite child and receiver of kisses. Oh, he was just, <laughs> just wonderful. I asked him after. I said, were you nervous? He said, yeah. Did he look nervous? Yeah. I mean, it was just just a beautiful family. They were yeah. kissing Bernie backstage. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. an easy <laughs> dog to kiss. I know. <laughs> it's and kind it's of wild. I mean, you want your kids to be open and and real and be receiving yes. of, of wonderful things from the world. So, you know, kiss your kids when you yeah. get home. And what a great know? mom. That's yes. what was in the yeah. whole, Well, the whole family. family. The the whole family. family. Mother's Day. Yeah. Yeah, my family Mother's Day is Sunday. Mother's yeah, what are you Day. doing? Yeah. Hey, buddy? Oh, oh, oh. I, I, you know, it's my, also my daughter's birthday, so it's really about her. Okay? <laughs> she Listen. made you a mom. Yeah, she did. <laughs> but a mother, everybody says I am. Anyway, <laughs> we want to thank you for watching. We want to thank y'all for coming. We want you to have a great day and yeah. take a little time to enjoy the view. Yeah.